Hello, a very warm welcome to the Love Factory here in Manchester. What a show we have lined up for you on Saturday night. It is headlined by the return of Lawrence Acoli to our sky screens. He puts his WBO crown on the line when he takes on David Light, Johnny Nelson. And congratulations, new daddy, Matt Macklin. How are you three weeks into fatherhood? A bit sleep deprived, but other than that, <laughs> We've got makeup for that, we can touch up with makeup, it, it's all fine. Going well though? Yeah, no, it's going well. Really good, 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 good. You've got a weekend off this weekend and you're going to enjoy some boxing. Exactly. Because uh, like I said, Lawrence Acoli is back on our screens. We haven't seen him fight in, well, about a year. So what are you expecting? You're expecting a little bit of ring rust. What are you hoping to see on Saturday? Yeah, a, a, a bit of rust possibly. Ho hopefully he doesn't try too hard to make a statement and then ends up loading up, forcing it and, and you know, not boxing that well, It's uh, which is you could easily see happening. Uh, I think he just has to try and put everything, all the outside issues behind him, just focus on, on the job at hand and, and just trying to relax into it. Don't try and force it. You know, we, we know we know he's a top performer. We know he carries serious power. He should This should be a routine win for him, really. Even though he's an undefeated opponent, he's never boxed at the level that Coley's uh, constantly performed that. So he should win. He should win emphatically. I think the, the biggest danger is that he doesn't try too hard and try and force it. It is the battle of the unbeaten. Someone's O has got to go. What do, what do you think, Johnny? Are you expecting a tough test or are you thinking like Matt that it should be on paper, it should be sort of job done for Lawrence? I don't know. I think, I think Lawrence is, is, is an unfinished fighter, uh, but he's a world champion. So therefore, he's only going to get better. Uh, he's unorthodox. He's not awkward. He's not He's not always pretty to watch, no, is he? he? Is, no, he isn't. He's like an orthodox style. So when it all comes together... When he realises that time and that punch power and everything comes together, and we probably get adapted to that, that to his style of fight, and we think, right, now I get it. He looks awkward, he's irky jerky, but he's got power in, in the shots. If you're fighting him, how do you prepare for somebody like that? How do, how do you then? You don't, you've got to put it on him. And if you put it on him, the chances are you're going to walk into a shot. So he can punch, he's tall, he's, he's, he's rangy. And so I expect him to. to really control the cruiserweight division until it steps up now in, uh, against guys like React Poor or, 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 or the other champions that are out there. And then that's when we'll see where he is, where he stands amongst them. Because the thing is, for the likes of Akoli, who we haven't seen in a ring for, for a year, he's kind of been on the sidelines, hasn't he, watching the likes of React Poor, Chris Bidden Smith. I mean, They've been active. They've, they've been putting on a show. They've been showing Lawrence Acoli what they've got, and he, he wants a piece of it again. Yeah, I mean, look, he's where they want to be in terms of he's world champion. They, they want to get there. But their careers is, are moving. Yeah. You, know, they're, you know, they're active. They're boxing. They're on Sky Television. Their profiles are, are growing all the yeah. time. Um, but, you know, one of those fights, all of a sudden, the press and the coverage that they would get puts him straight you know he, he kind of catches that back up yeah. so I think look Coley's just got to keep winning you know he's had a lot of uh, outside the ring issues hopefully that's all behind him now and uh, he can just push on with his career what are you going to say Johnny I was going to say yeah so so Lawrence is in a position they want to be but they're getting the spotlight the, the, the conversation about them and that's what what Lawrence wants now Lawrence and Richard bumped into each other at some premiere or whatever Agreed. that got more headlines for both fighters because they thought, wow, this is for real. They're both nice guys, but obviously now it's, there's a uh, there's a bit of professional jealousy there between them, as if to say Richard didn't like how Lawrence is talking down to him, and Lawrence is thinking, I'm world champion, I'm proven. So now that's creating an appetite, and you always need a dance partner in any division you are. So therefore, for these guys, and it's not dismissing Chris Bill and Smith, for these guys, they are now their dance partners, and that's a fight that people are thinking, we hope we see that down the line. But Lawrence has got to get through this. Uh, and I expect him to do that. David Light, I just think getting in with Lawrence, he'll not realise how powerful he is until he gets hit. Because Lawrence talking about stepping up to, 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 to heavyweight. We saw him working alongside with Sugar Hill and, and Tyson Fury. That, and he's still talking about fighting heavyweight. Be because that's one of the big changes that, that Lawrence has made, isn't it, in his camp? That he, he's made the move from Shane McGuigan to Sugar Hill Stewart. A good move for Lawrence, do you think? Or a good move well, to have I, Sugar Hill well, with him? I thought Shane McGuigan was a good trainer yeah. for him. I thought he made quite a lot of improvements yep. with Lawrence Acoli and they built up, it seemed like a good rapport re relationship. But, you know, if he was going to move and he has moved, then I think that um, Sugar Hill was probably the right move for him because I think um, 
Style wise, I think he'll be good. He'll be trying to really teach that uh, double sparring. jab right hand and the sparring, yeah, which is which is an essential part of your preparation. Well, it was exactly what you're going to say. You've got great sparring in the gym already with the yeah, likes of Tyson. And, 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 and no matter what you say, if you're in the gym with Tyson Fury, his style is so unorthodox. You're gonna, but you're going to learn, learn so much about fighting, where, uh, uh, mental warfare, uh, little tricks of the trade when you're in the ring, uh, when you're fighting that you wouldn't no normally learn. So. He's in a position now where he's picking up more information. He's with a coach that can actually pass that information on to him. I think he's made the right move in regards to stepping up and actually coming out of his shell to say, right, I want to be a better fighter than I am now at World Champions. And, and sometimes you have to make those changes, don't you? If you, if you want to kind of a, a change as good as a holiday, they say, you know, kind of make those big changes to, to move on to the next level and learn and you learn different things. You're constantly learning. Yeah, well, and also, you know, staying motivated over a long career. Sometimes you just need to freshen things up yeah. just to kind of keep to reignite the fire um, I think style wise I think you know Sugar Hill will definitely improve his jab we know Okoli's got a great right hand but you'll, you'll only land that long right hand if you've got a master jab that can set it up and gauge that distance and you know I think there is room for improvement on his jab so yeah I think, I think it's, it's probably a good move for him um, in terms of the rest of the card, Johnny, who are you looking forward to seeing? I'm guessing Fraser Clark. Of course, Fraser Clark. I think Fraser Clark, again, I, I always think each fight, he needs to be in that little bit deeper, that little bit deeper, that little bit deeper, because he doesn't want to be messing about at this level now. He needs to now, now get it, any opportunity he can to step in there for the heavyweight title uh, domestically, then on the Commonwealth, then on the European, and get it done. So I'm just... I'm enjoying watching his story unfold. He's had a late change of opponent as need to deal with in this one throughout yeah. throughout the week. Right now, Booker had to withdraw on medical grounds and in, in comes a new opponent in Bogdan Dinu. But again, a, a good opponent for Fraser, but it's one of those things as a professional fighter, you both know all too well, it's one of those things that you've got to adjust and you've got to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. And he, you know, he's, he's very experienced. He's travelled the world, extensive amateur uh, pedigree and experience so he'll, he will he'll be used to making adjustments and adapting but you know it's just frustrating for him because he's he's had a bit of a nightmare start to his career between injuries and opponents falling yeah. through he hasn't quite it hasn't caught fire as quickly I think fr frustrating the is the word yeah, isn't it? yeah, 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 yeah but yeah, he's dealt yeah. with it well hasn't he he has uh, and uh, fortunate enough he's, he's professional enough to to think right this is how we've got to deal with this stuff don't panic get the job done look at what's out there most of these top fighters we've seen he sparred with them most of these top fighters that are up there already he knows what he's capable of doing with them but now he's just got to shorten a public uh, and I public think with stage. all of us we always say about praise him we just want to see him call people out a little bit more you're always egging him on aren't you when, when he's with I us go come on Fraser <laughs> just do. do it but you, you know what I Everybody's trying to be super nice like Anthony Joshua. And Anthony Joshua's seen that super nice gets you so far. Be yourself. If you want to call a fight out, doesn't mean you hate him, doesn't mean it just means I want to fight you. And I'm not I'm not hiding that fight. And so then all of a sudden it creates an appetite for the public. The public is saying, well actually he wants this fight. Then the then the promoter's saying, you know, we'll do this. And that's how you put yourself up front. For Fraser as well, the Manchester Arena is it, becoming it's like a second home for him now. I think this is his fourth fight in his, his six professional fights that he's had at Manchester Arena. So it's almost becoming like his sort of second home now, Matt. Is, is that comforting as a fighter when you get used to a venue like that? Yeah, you know, you get used to where the hotel is, where, the, where you're going to eat that night. You, these are your little kind of things that uh, get you ready for the fight. I like that, and I'm not a fighter. It's <laughs> just a great place anyway, so as long as he keeps doing it, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. Look, I think Manchester... London, the O2, there's, you know the Wembley as well. Obviously, I think Birmingham Resort as well. These are going to these are kind of the, the areas where there's going to be regular shows. I think so. Yeah, he, he'll get his kind of um, itinerary, his, his plan, ready. Well, I think uh, Big Phrase is up there on the stage and he's ready to go. So let's hand you over to uh, Big Mo, who's lost his Mo for the introductions. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Love Factory here in Manchester, England, for the live showdown as we head towards this Saturday, March 25th, for Lawrence Acoli's return to Sky Sports as he aims to defend his WBO Cruiserweight Championship of the World against the undefeated challenger, David Light. We welcome our viewers joining us now on Sky Sports as well as the Boxer YouTube channel. We're going to begin our live showdown first with a brief press conference, and then we're going to head to the head-to-heads, and then obviously the main event showdown as well. 
We would like to thank our headline partner this afternoon, Bet365, as well as our official partners, Everlast, Village Hotels, Wow Hydrate, and FCI Markets. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, there are a few tickets remaining for this Saturday's show at the AO Arena in Manchester, so make sure you grab your tickets or tune in to Sky Sports Showcase for the official show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome back on stage the host of today's live showdown, Mr. Savage Dan. Joining Savage Dan on stage, the head of boxer promoter Ben Shalom. And alongside Ben Shalom is the former European Super Bantamweight champion, Spencer Oliver, and also the longest reigning cruiserweight champion in history from Sky Sports, Mr. Johnny Nelson. And two of our competitors competing this Saturday from the AO Arena here in Manchester. First, from Barnsley, England. Here is the undefeated. He is the current reigning Central Area Super Middleweight Champion, Callum Simpson. And also from Burton up on Trent, the undefeated, the Olympic bronze medalist, and the Commonwealth gold medalist, the undefeated, big phrase, Fraser Clark. Savage Dan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Big Mo. Fraser, I will come to you first. Uh, you seem like you're in a good mood today. Smiley. Um, Saturday night, you've got a very good opponent, especially on short notice. He's been in there with the likes of Jarrell Miller. He's been in there with Kubrat Pulev. Um, a very good test for you and a, a good indicator of where you're at. Yeah, let, let's get to work. You know, Bogdan Dino, he's got good credentials. He's been in there with some good fighters. And I think it's time, you know, that um, these are the kind of fights people want to see me in. And I'm here for it. So, you know, I've never been backed down from a challenge. What, despite what people say or think, I will fight anyone. I've been in there with some of the world's very best um, as an amateur. And now as a professional, it's time for me to start proving myself. Uh, the only way I can do that is by fighting guys like Dino. And um, I've got a lot of respect for him. I've seen him in a few camps. I know he's capable, um, but so am I. You've passed every, every test with flying colours so far. Um, got some very good wins under your belt, progressing very nicely. It seems as though you're becoming a bit more of a refined fighter under Angel. Uh, than maybe you were known for as an amateur? You know, it's about homing your skills. This game, you have to keep learning, keep learning, keep progressing. Every time I go in that gym, I aim to leave having learned something and try and add it to my game. I watched um, a Joe Lewis documentary last night and I'm trying to learn something, trying to learn from these guys that have done it before me. Um, you know, there hasn't been no spectacular knockouts yet, but the, my balance is better. Than my, in my last fight, than my first fight, my hand position's better, my jab is better. I'm trying to think all the time, and yeah, heavyweights can go in there and knock lumps out of each other. People love to see it. How many, how many heavyweights can use the brain, box, move, and get the fundamentals absolutely bang on in order to get to the top? You seem to add something to your arsenal every single time you get in there. What's been added this camp? I think, you know, um, because we're doing longer rounds, we focused on um, breaking people down. You know, taking your time, maybe don't throw the five punch com uh, combination, throw the three punches, make them solid. Providing you get past Saturday night with no injuries, uh, no problems, what do you want for the rest of 2023? You know, all concentrations on Saturday, but what do I want? I want the titles, and, and, and that's no lie. You know, um, I've heard some, some absolute ludicrous statements recently that I'm not on the same level or can't be mentioned the same breath as Fabio Wardley. And I just, I, just, I just see it as absolute. These people need sectioning because there's no chance on this earth that I'm, I'm not at that level already. But um, like I say, let me hone my skills. Let me, um, let, me, let, me get, let me do the rounds. And you know, sooner or later, hopefully this year, them kind of fights will come off. Let's move on to Callum. Callum, there's a lot of excitement around you. Um, Maybe you are one of the best kept secrets in boxing. Uh, 10 and 0, 8 stoppages. For those that don't know much about you, what can they expect to see? Yeah, I think I'm, um, well, yeah, best kept secret, the secret's out of the bag now, isn't it? So, yeah, I think I'm an exciting fighter. Um, you know, I think I put, my, put my punches together well. I'm, well, powerful, I've been told, fast. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to show it well. Like, yeah, I'm going to show it all Saturday night. I think it'll be, be a good fighter. Yeah. You're in a, a very competitive division, super middle. Um, are there particular people you're looking at, opponents, uh, or are you just going off the belts or just trying to be pretty steady with your progress? Yeah, I think for my next, for my next few fights, I think um, 
straight at the top 10 really is obviously Jack Kilgan and Jermaine Brown, Zach Chelly. I think obviously Chelly in his last fight did it really doing very well with his career, credit to him. So I think for me, the next fight after this, either Jack Kilgan or Jermaine Brown. Hopefully, if, if um, Chelly vacates the English, then obviously I'll fight one of them two for the English. And then British start next year. I'm sure Ben can sort that out. Your opponent on Saturday night is nicknamed El Phenomeno. Can we expect something phenomenal from you? I had to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can we expect something phenomenal on Saturday? Yeah, from myself. Yeah, from myself. Not sure about him, but uh, yeah, from from myself definitely. Uh, you have got a big following also from from Barnsley, uh, Barnsley Football Club. Everyone's behind you. Are we expecting many people coming down? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, there's quite a lot coming down from Barnsley, uh, and it's like especially Yorkshire, South Yorkshire. Um, few coming away from Sheffield. I think there's like ten of the players are coming ringside as well. So. They're obviously, they're supposed to play on Saturday, but the game got postponed. Uh, they said it because the Ipswich players were called to play internationally, but I think it's because they want to come watch me fight instead. I think that was the real reason. So yeah, there's plenty coming down to support me. Yeah. Whatever it is, it works for you. Uh, ben, we should be really excited about these two, shouldn't we? Yeah, I mean, just on Callum, our team are so excited for Callum Simpson. We think you are the best kept secret in the super middleweight division. He's already ten and zero. He's already ready to go. He's going to box Celso Neves, who who's fought Padre McCrory, who took Felix Cash the distance only in December. We believe this guy's on that level and can go even further. And so delighted, obviously, with a new signing, but also with Callum, a future superstar, and Fraser. I mean, this is his first eight-rounder, and he's boxing someone that boxed Daniel Dubois in his 15th fight or 17th fight. This guy's been in there with Jarrell Miller. When we heard the news about Riddell Booker on, on Sunday morning, first thoughts were with him. I do wish him are very, very best because it did look very bleak. I think he was almost uh, fighting for his life at one stage. But we thought, here we go again with Fraser Clark. Luckily, we have five days this time. Thank you to the team who did an incredible job to turn Bogdandino round in 15 hours and probably a better opponent for Fraser Clark. So very, very excited to see Fraser show how good he is. And I echo his words. There's a lot of nonsense going around comparing him to British level. This guy's going way beyond British level. It's his first eight rounder. Let's keep our feet on the ground, and we can get we can get moving this year. Spence, I I know you're chomping at the bit to, to get involved. How good is Callum? I know you were speaking to me off stage about it. How good is he? Yeah, Callum's brilliant. Um, I'm always chomping at the bit to get involved. You know that. I love talking. But yeah, no, Callum's brilliant. He is the best kept secret in British boxing at the moment. Ten and zero, eight KOs. Callum, I want to ask you a question. Actually, I told you this anyway. Who inspired you as a young man growing up? Who was a, like a boxing idol of yours? Was it was it Joe Calzaghe? He is one of one of yeah. Definitely. I could see that in definitely when I was watching so, yeah. your fights. I was looking back a lot of your fights today, and there's a lot of similarities. Yes, you're orthodox, and Joe was a southpaw, but a lot of similarities. You carry your hands low, you faint a lot, you get inside. You like throwing clusters of punches. You're heavy-handed, and you throw great uppercuts. You've got a lot of potential there, and I saw a lot of Joe in your style and I just wanted to ask you that question yeah it's not really someone that I try to base my style across, uh, on but I've, I've been, even the amateur days I've been told people come after me come to me after fights you know you, you've got the uh, same style of Joe Calzaghe so I've been told that quite a lot yeah but definitely one of the best from the UK 100% and uh, yeah I like to say I like to put my, my shots together I like to throw them combos I like to just overwhelm my opponents and obviously I make, that's what I've got to make sure I'm fit enough to be able to do that I'm looking forward to the to the public seeing you on a big platform like Sky Sports and showcasing your skills. You've also got a little bit that that cockiness, arrogance, that confidence of, of Joe Calzaghe as well. I don't know if it's arrogance, just just, com just confidence, just no, confidence. No, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's moulded into one. It's a good thing. Yeah, no, good, good. But yeah, like, like you're saying, obviously, I'm looking forward to, to getting on Sky and obviously fighting a probably more credible opponent. And like I say, uh, Neves was actually going to come and it's going to come in to win like I said, I said to everybody all the time like all them whatever it is you've seen me of me on YouTube or Instagram whatever it is you've, no one's seen nothing yet like I've, I've been, all my fights that I've had they've been good the past eight have been like the first second or three rounds and uh, obviously every fight we've worked on certain things but there's not I've not really shown nothing yet in any of those but, but my actual boxing ability I've just kind of gone out and gone out and blown them out to try and make a statement to get on into the position I am now yeah well when you've got a fight that comes with ambition you can showcase your skills much better and I'm sure we're going to see that on Saturday night Fraser I wanted to move on to you as well you know I wanted to talk to you about where you're at right now in the heavyweight division like 5-0 and oh, and the public perception maybe of you is like they, they get frustrated and they want more and I'm going what more do you want like do you find this yourself like I'm 
me as an outsider looking at it thinking, look, you've got to give the guy time to develop. Slonovsky was a guy that has been in with a lot of names. He pushes a lot of names, beats a lot of guys. That was a great learning curve for you. Good for your development stages. And you are moving, of which I think is at a really good rate. Do you get frustrated with the way that the public want you to go faster than you are? They've got to remember that, look, you had an extensive amateur career and a very successful one, but you have only had five fights. Do you feel that, you know, that you are maybe a little bit hard done by by the way that the public think that you should be moving faster than you actually are? A little bit, yeah. Um, everyone just thinks I'm after Johnny's job. That sort of thing. You know, yeah. Well, there's, there is an element of that yeah. to it as well. You know, you, know, I mean, you know, because they see me um, doing the punditry and stuff, uh, the co-commentary now and then, um, people think, you know, I'm, I'm not serious. But in terms of boxing, it's, it's my life, it's what I love. And the Sokolowski performance was actually my, me on my worst day. I had a, a, a really bad camp. There was a lot of disturbances. And... People say, no, do you, uh, do, you, do, you want, do you not want to take that fight? Do you don't want to have that fight anymore? I was like, no, because I can beat this guy on my, on my worst performance. I can beat him, no problem. And he's the test. I would have liked to have been in better shape so I could have I got him out of there. But I didn't. Um, yeah, we hear a lot, don't we? Plumbers, yeah. doormen, bouncers. You know but for phrase, you know what, though? You'll look back on that fight that you just mentioned and see that as one of the best learning fights that you would have had. Like, even though you felt that you underperformed, you've got a guy there that comes with a lot of credentials, got a lot of experience, and when you look back, you don't recognise it right now. Johnny will, Johnny will back me on yeah. this. Well, when you look back on that, you're, you're, that will be one of the fights that you take the most from. Unfortunately, I'm old enough to have seen all the, the other heavyweights that came through when he first came on the scene, Lennox Lewis, Frank Bruno, and you all slipped through, and you had to fight certain shapes and sizes of opponents. What must be frustrating for you is the fact that these headliners that are out there now, you've actually sparred or boxed them in the amateurs. You're very more familiar with them than the public actually realise. So therefore, you know what you're capable of doing, but you just gotta, you've got to wait your turn to get in, get in position. Yeah, I think what matters, Johnny, is, and I'm like no other, it's all right talking it, it's all right me talking it, it's all right us living off the fact that I won a bronze medal at the Olympics, Commonwealth gold, um, European medal, world one that got nicked off me it's all right talking about all them accolades but people want to see it under the lights on on the boxer shows and on sky sports now i've got the responsibility of doing that of uh, controlling that narrative and showing people what i'm really about you can only do that by fighting that's why i'm glad that ben keeps me busy and i do get to show that saturday night i hope people see an improvement and let them know that i'm serious no one has had more scrutiny in our stable on their first five fights than Fraser Clark because so much is expected of him. It's unbelievable. I think there's no other heavyweight boxing in front of bigger audiences. He's on massive shows in his first fights of his professional career. That comes with heaps of expectation. He's got to fight, as you said, different shapes, different yeah. sizes. Yeah. So when he does get to world level, we know we've done our job and that's what this is. Ben, but you know what? When people are talking about fighters at an early stage of their, of their careers, when they're talking, the way that they talk about Fraser, trust me, that's a good thing. They're talking for a reason. Fraser, how soon would you like to, to get in with somebody like Wardley or, or would they get in with somebody like you? How soon would you like that to happen? Saturday night. <laughs> I'm used to late replacements. Swap uh, Dino with Wardley. Like, that, that's not a problem for me. And this is no disrespect to him. I've got no problem with Fabio. He's got what I, what I want eventually, you know, we'll, and we'll get there, I think, in the next two or three fights. Um, I don't, there's no, nothing personal with any of these other heavyweights. I'm ambitious and I'm hungry. So, you know, you know yourself, Johnny, you've been there, you've been there. You want to be successful. You want to be the man. And that, I'm no different to no one else. Can I just say, Callum, I think boxer have, have done an amazing coup in getting you. I'd seen you box before any of this and I thought, when I saw that you were on the, now on the roster, I thought, Jesus that's a really good shout because you can fight you know, you've got, you've got pretenders you've got, you've got guys that, that potentially can be something, you can fight and I think they have really found a diamond in the rough with you so now matchmaking is the most important thing for your career to, to develop you as a fighter because you can fight and the fan base, Johnny. You must see it in Yorkshire. Yorkshire. He's just brought in his first Yorkshire. thing. Yeah, we're all Yorkshire, aren't we? Especially is, South Yorkshire as well. This yeah. is the new star of Yorkshire. This is the guy that's actually... The, you hear a lot of people about, talking about ticket sellers in Sheffield and Yorkshire. 
and it's all smoke and mirrors a lot of the time. This guy's got a huge fan base. Barnsley Football Club are right behind him. He's got everything Sam to be Yorkshire a star. Sam Yorkshire is like that, where if you've got someone that's got a talented fighter, it's, it, it spreads like wildfire, mm. and, and he's that guy. Uh, Cal- he's that guy they talk about. Callum, how excited are you to be fighting on a platform as big as this? You know, because good fighters, they feed off that pressure. And, uh, and there is a lot of pressure going into this one because, you know, there's a lot of praise for you going into this one and your, your record speaks for itself. Your style speaks for itself. It's exciting. You're an infectious person yourself. It's all there for you. Do you feel the pressure at all? Um, there's a lot of pressure, but, you know, that's, uh, what's the saying? No pressure, no diamonds. So, yeah, I feel like I strive off pressure. And um, I feel like, like I think the more pressure it is, like when, like when I go to sparring up, I prefer sparring other gyms, and then when like the, there's other, their, I mean, I mean, their team's watching, all their kind of mates are watching, that's when I perform best. I like to not show off, but I like to kind of show off my skill kind of thing. And yeah, like, like, so like Johnny was saying, obviously, my opportunity now, my, my time to shine, I've been, been doing this. I started when I boxing when I was nine, been doing it seven, like 17 years. You know, I've not gone to the Olympics or done the things that Amateur that Fraser's done, but you know, I've done. A, I put a lot of hard work in for like the past past 17 years. I've had 50 amateur fights, 10 pro fights, been on them small old shows, um, and yeah, now I'm on that big stage and I'm gonna grab it with both hands, yeah. Well, thanks guys for taking all the pressure off me. I didn't have to do any talking. You did it all for me. Uh, we'll take a short break and then we are back with the head-to-heads. Oh, Matt, I think all bases were covered there. I think they pretty much t- talked about everything and anything to do with those fights. <laughs> yeah, I think we've got nothing left to say. <laughs> no, it is, it is a big opportunity for Callum, though, isn't it? Because when you're making your Boxer and Sky debut, you, you want to make a statement, you want to make a really big impression. And I guess there can be a little bit of danger then of, of sort of trying too hard. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the because when you try too hard, you you know, you you stiffen up, you tighten up, and everything becomes forced. In, in, in boxing, I suppose any sport, you need to let things flow. You need to find that rhythm, and and, and it, 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 it's graceful and it's effortless, and, it, and it, everything works out. Where when you try too hard, you tighten up, you lose your rhythm. Everything's forced. You tell the people can see that you're, you're you're loading up, and everything just goes to part. So yeah, I mean, staying. It'll be a lifelong practice throughout his career, trying to find that sweet spot in the middle. We're just trying to like be relaxed but focused at the same time. What are you looking to see from Callum though on Saturday? Um, just that, what we said, just go out and uh, show us what he's got without trying to, tr- don't try too hard, relax and just let his boxing ability and, and skills, just, just let it flow. The thing I like about Fraser Clark is that he is very sort of self-assured, isn't he? And he, he's not sort of running before he can walk and he's not hes not moving too quickly. He takes it all in his stride. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he's yeah. very aware of where he's at. Yeah, but he's not hes not a young kid prospect. No, Do you know it, what I mean? He's, and there he's, is a pressure, I guess, with his age and where he's at to, to push on. Yeah, but, but, there's, but in terms of what you were saying, there's maturity there, yeah. isn't there? Because he's, you know, and he's a, even though he's a, a novice professional, he's not a novice fighter. He's a very experienced boxer. He's been around the world. He's, and he's, he'll have, uh, he's performed, he's competed against some top, top guys who have gone on and had great careers as professionals. So he knows he's on that ability level. He's just got to make the transition now into the professional ranks, which... It hasn't happened as quickly as probably he would have liked through no fault of his own. You know, there was injuries, there was opponents pulling out. So that's kind of hampered his progress. It's been but factors out of his control. It's been out of his control. Yeah. He's done everything he can do. Um, and you are, you're right. I think w- when you prepare well and he's, there is that sort of confidence and self-assurance that he does carry and it's uh, the maturity there. And I think once it kicks in for him, once he gets that performance, momentum and the, a bit yeah. of momentum, I think it'll happen quickly for him. Yeah, looking forward to seeing it. Right, we're going to push on now and hand you back to uh, Big Mo for the next lot of fighters. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the main stage here for our live showdown. We have Savage Dan back on stage for the head-to-head, the face-off component of our live showdown. We're going to bring up some of our featured bouts that are here today. Let them talk a little bit. Let them square off before, obviously, we head into the weigh-ins tomorrow and fight night on Saturday here at the AO Arena in Manchester. I'm going to bring up first a featherweight contest for Saturday night. Introducing first to the stage, he comes to us from Liverpool, England, with a professional record of 12 victories versus just three defeats, with three of those wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Brian 
Phillips. And his opponent on Saturday night here in Manchester from Prentigreg, Wales, coming to us with a perfect undefeated record. Here is Reese Edwards. Reese, you are the home fighter, but you are from just down the road in Liverpool. Do you feel like you're going to have more support on the night? Um, I don't know. I don't really care. I'm, I'm coming. It's only me and Reese in the ring. So it doesn't matter who's outside the ring. It's just me and him in there. You've been in confident mood all week. Uh, do you feel like this is a fight you've definitely come to win? Yeah, 100%. Every fight, I always want to win. I'm, I'm coming. And he knows I'm coming. Reese, do you think this is about levels and, and that you're just a level above? Yeah, 100%. Um, don't get me wrong, he's a, he's a, he's a good fighter. Um, I know he's coming to win, but it's not a chance. Um, I, I know I'm a level or two above him. Brian, he's never been beaten before. There is no blueprint. What do you have to do to get the win? I don't know. I'm going to leave it all in there. I'm going to give it me all. How much of a look have you had in? Um, I've had a little look. Um, as I said, he, he, he is a good fighter, but um, he's not good enough. Where do you think this fight is won and lost? Um, obviously, it's an it's a important step up in my career right now. Um, and yeah, I'm just really looking forward to it. Can't, can't wait for the first bell. Brian, have you seen anything in Reese's arsenal that you can exploit any weaknesses? Um, I had a little look in um, probably about five seconds. He bored me. So... Um, I turned it off and let my team look. Is, is your plan of action to bring the action then if you think he's going to stay on the back foot and be um, pretty boring? I don't know. I'm just going to punch him more times than he punches me. There's no real animosity here. It's, a, no. it's, it's more genuine respect and competitiveness. Yeah. Do you have any final words to each other? No, not really. Um, just, just let's carry on. I can't wait. Can't wait. Good luck to both of yeah. you. It's like this. Yeah. See you start there, lads. You've got to do head to head. On your mark. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is our featherweight contest Saturday night, March 25th, here in Manchester at the AO Arena. Brian Phillips versus the undefeated Reese Edwards. Live, boxer on Sky Sports Showcase. Up next, ladies and gentlemen, one of our featured bouts for Saturday, going to do a head-to-head -head with Savage Dan. Ten three-minute rounds in the super featherweight division, and it is for the vacant English super featherweight championship. Introducing first to the stage from Grimsby, England, he comes to us with an undefeated record. Here is Levi Giles. And his opponent vying for the title as well. He comes to us from right here in Manchester, England, with a professional record of 18 victories versus just one loss. He is the current reigning Central Area Super Featherweight Champion, Michael Gomez Jr. This is a very good fight, a genuine 50-50. Levi, it's a step up, you are unbeaten. But do you think this is the right step up at the right time? Yeah, 100%. Um, we've been trying to make this, well, not this exact fight, but plenty of um, title fights for a while now, and now it's here. Um, I believe it more so when I'm in the ring with him, but it's here. Let's do it. Forget the ring, mate. I'm here. Now if you want to fight, now we can fight. Now if you want me. Ready to go on Saturday night? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm cool, but the man's going on about how when he's there in the ring, I'm here now, we can go whenever you want. We'll Do see. you think he's stepping up too soon? I don't know anything about him, mate. I couldn't tell you. I don't know how good he is. I don't know anything about him. Saturday night, we'll find out how good he is. Levi, how much do you know about Michael? No, the team have done enough um, looking on Michael. I mean, he's um, been in with one decent opponent in Phillips. Um, so I'd say that, that experience is what he's got on me, fair enough. But other than that, no, it's only because no one's stepped in with me yet. So we'll see Saturday night. It's a good test for me, see where I'm at and see if what Michael's got. Michael, you've got the edge and experience. You've been on this stage before. What is it going to take to win this fight? Same as every other fight, I'm just going to punch his face in. No uh, particular strategy, you don't need to really have a look, you've just got more will. No mate, I'm just going to go in there, stick it on him, we'll see how good he is. Levi, I'm guessing you, you will have prepared for that kind of similar circumstance, someone to come and stick it on you. How do you evade it? Yeah, we know what he brings. Um, forward, one dimensional. He walks centre of the ring, holds his hands up, throws plenty of shots. So, uh, yeah, we know what he's going to bring and we'll know how to deal with it come Saturday night. You'll see. Any final words to each other? No, no, from me. Good luck Saturday night, guys. Face off. Ladies and gentlemen, one of our title fights Saturday night here in Manchester for the vacant English Super Featherweight Championship. Grimsby versus Manchester. Levi Giles versus Michael Gomez Jr. Live on Sky Sports Showcase. Moving right along, ladies and gentlemen, our next contest of our live showdown to do a face-off today here with Savage Dan is scheduled for six two-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first to the stage, she comes to us from Bolton, England, with a record of four victories versus just one defeat. Here is Lindsay Budzinski. And her opponent, she comes to us with an undefeated record from Macclesfield, England. Here is the 2020 Olympic bronze medalist, Karis Ardingstall. This is a bit of a local derby, if you like. Um, Lindsay, you actually wanted this fight. Why? I just wanted the opportunity to show everybody on a big stage uh, what, what I can actually do in the ring. Uh, Saturday night, everyone will see that. A lot of fighters would maybe prefer to stay clear of an Olympian early on. Um, you seem really willing and wanting to fight. What gives you that confidence? Do you know what? I'm not, I'm not scared to take any fight. Um, I'll fight anyone, any time, on any stage, really. So I'm ready for this. Karis, i uh, talked about levels already today. Is this about levels? I'll never underestimate anybody. Credit to ever taken a fight, but I am a level above you. Two levels, if anything, and I'll show that Saturday night. Is this a case of perhaps you not having much to gain and everything to lose? Um, not really. I've still got to gain the experience and whatnot, Anna, and I need the step-ups each fight, and Lindsay is a step-up from my previous opponents. She boxes more from my last two previous opponents, but personally, her throwing the shots are going to leave more openings for me, so I'm going to find my shots as well. You've mentioned the experience there. I think you've had three times the amount of rounds that, that you've had. Do you think that's going to be a telling factor in a fight? Uh, yeah, I have got the, the experience, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming into this fight, I'm relaxed. Uh, she's the one that's got everything to prove in it. This is, you know, th th this is just a, a, you know, an opportunity for me, so just to show everybody what I can do. You punch hard for your weight, Karis. Is the style of fight maybe going to play into your hands, knowing that maybe she is going to try and win this fight more than some of your opponents have? I don't know. I've watched her. I've studied her. Of course I have. Um, she doesn't typically come on the front foot. If she wants to come on the front foot with me, then fair play to her. But 
I believe I'll box her the same way I box everybody else. Smart pressure, counter puncher on the front foot. Lindsay, how do you win this fight? Um, I just I've, I've studied her. Uh, I do see openings. We have worked on stuff. So Saturday night, I'll show everybody what, what I can do. Any final words? Good luck. Same. Good luck to both of you. Ladies and gentlemen, six two-minute rounds in the featherweight division this Saturday here in Manchester. Boxer on Sky Sports, Bolton versus Macclesfield. Lindsay Butchinski versus the Olympic bronze medalist making her return, Karis Artingstall. Neither fighter there, Johnny, wanted to give an inch, did they? I, I like that. And Lindsay hunting this fight. She's thinking, you know, and the, the problem is when you're a target, people are, are watching you a long time before you even know they're around. And for Lindsay to say, I want this fight, she obviously sees something there, a way of fast-tracking herself into a position where the carries is. How much do you think the experience of Lindsay w will come into play on Saturday night? Like they just said there, uh, three times the amount of rounds that the Karras has done. How much will that make a difference, do you think? Uh, I think it'll make a difference, but, but professionals and amateurs are completely different. And there's not many good amateurs that make outstanding professionals. And, and, and only, few, only few can do that. Hello, Lauren Price. Hello. Good nice to, to see you. you. You too. Congratulations for your win the other week in Paris. Thank you very much. Yes, Jamie Manners. How, how are you feeling? How are you reflecting on that fight? Yeah, you know what? For me, it was just, I didn't box since October, so I just wanted, you know, to get back out. The main focus this year is to have a busy year, keep, get momentum behind me, and that's when you'll see me at my best. Uh, so, yeah, it was good, you know, step up for the eight rounds. Um, decent opponent. She just boxed for a European title. So, yeah, just go out there, um, box. I felt like I was, you know, composed, enjoyed myself, and box again now in six weeks' time. We'll get on to the reason why you're here today, of course, for Karis. But uh, was there much of a difference? Did you feel much of a difference boxing in Paris? Of course, it was where you qualified for the Olympics, the Tokyo Olympics, wasn't it? Do you know what? Yeah, it was It was a little bit different, you know. Um, I didn't. I felt like, obviously, the French, they were kind of running things. Uh, the weigh-in was a bit unusual. Um, obviously, we were meant to weigh in at 3 o'clock, and then it ended up being, like, quarter to four. How much difference does that make? I mean, some people say, oh, it's 45 minutes or whatever, but that's a massive thing, Especially isn't it, when you've got to weigh in? Yeah, and I just think, like, it just seemed a little bit laid back, whereas, like, you know, being with Sky and Boxer, everything, everything's, like, organised for you. And it was the same after the fight. I got drug tested, and no one spoke English. So it was just like, obviously, but then for myself, you know, it was good to go away and experience that. And, you know, boxing abroad as well, you know, it's, it's good for obviously the other countries to see, you know, what, what talent we got in Britain as well. So, yeah, I did enjoy it, you know. Um, I would have liked to stay out there for a few days, but obviously I had to go back in the gym with Karis with, with her boxing, you know. That's so you should have joined Dan Aziz. He had a right time, didn't he? He went on a sightseeing tour. <laughs> I think it's part of the, uh, the experience of being a pro to, to go to different countries as well and see how they operate things aren't supposed to run smoothly for you all the time as long as you can still do the job when you get in the ring yeah hundred percent even like you know down to fight night in that there was a protest going on in france i think it was like a two million people march um the cars couldn't get to us and stuff like that so you know but i had obviously had rob behind me great team um i've boxed you know all around the world as an amateur you know so for me i'm quite laid back as it is and quite chilled anyway thank god well, was but there much much difference to the amateur scene and the professional scene doing that fight, fighting abroad do you, do you feel the difference in the, the environment and the, the, the setup, the infrastructure? Um, yeah, as an amateur, you are basically have everything done for you. You know, you've got a team behind you, um, your old team, your team GB, you know, even when you're going down, for example, for the drug testing and stuff like that, you've got a doctor with you, you've got your team with you, everyone, you know, everyone's on the same wavelength. So for me, when I go back to the changing rooms, and it was it was weird as well, because normally even over here, you get a medical straight away, don't you? They were like, nah, no medical, just drug testing. So I was like, oh, yeah, everything. Thing, you know it's, it was but it was good to experience like you said you know uh, all aspects and that's all going to add to your, to your confidence and all part of the learning curve isn't it yeah 100 percent. like i said obviously for me paris you know is a is a close place to my art as well i qualified there for the olympic games so 
to go back, you know, and box there. Uh, it was pretty special. It makes it extra sweet, doesn't it? Um, busy time for you. Then you're back out again in six weeks. Yes. Uh, a bit of a pause, though, this weekend. You're here supporting Karis. Um, how's she doing? She, she looks she looks strong. She looks confident up there. Yeah, do you know what, right? I say this every, every time, but to be fair, I think she's, you know, the, the fitter she's ever been. Um, she's been spun, you know, the top girls in the country down to the amateurs. They are looking now to go away to qualify for the Olympics. So they, you know, they're in really top top nick and she's been you know sparring really well i've done some rounds with her myself as well she's looking sharp she's looking strong and um for her obviously uh boxing in manchester it's like her homecoming so you know to have that crowd behind her as well on saturday night that's going to be pretty special for her and i'm excited for her to go out and, and put on a show we said the same about fraser it's kind of like a second home now manchester and how much of a difference that makes to a fighter when you're sort of familiar with your settings yeah exactly you know and i suppose as an amateur we've always boxed around the world so for us it's, it's about getting used to these crowds and situations and for me it was the same when I boxed on the Shields martial card you know coming out on top of that ramp I had goosebumps you know it's, it's something I've never experienced and it's something that'll stick with me forever so for her on Saturday you know when even if things you know get a little bit tough in and wherever I'm sure you know when that crowd's behind her as well you know cheer her on that that help us through yeah, just to remind you, if you haven't watched the documentary, The Road to Undisputed, it's out there. I don't know if you've seen it, Johnny, but I, I watched it back and exactly like you just said there, it really, really does give you sort of the hairs on the back of your neck stand up because it was such a special night, wasn't it? It was. Like, I, always, I like to be like quite serious on my ring walk, but as soon as I come out, I just couldn't help but smile. <laughs> and I was like, this is just insane. You know, I can't wait to box in Cardiff and have, have my own come in. And I can't imagine what it's going to be like. But, you know, it'll be, it'll be pretty, well, to, to top it, it'll have to be pretty special. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see much more of you as the weekend goes on. Uh, but let's get back to a Big Mo for our main event. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the main event portion of this afternoon. As we head towards Saturday night, here in Manchester at the AO Arena, Saturday, March 25th. I want to introduce a few people that are joining us on stage first, welcoming back our host, Savage Dan, and also welcoming back the promoter of the event, Mr. Ben Shalom of Boxer. And now, on the side of the challenger, I want to welcome Isaac Peach and Matt Rose. And obviously, they are joining one half of our main event this Saturday, from Auckland, New Zealand. He is the undefeated. He is the reigning WBO Oriental, global, and intercontinental cruiserweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David, the great white light. And on the side of the champion, obviously I introduced Ben Shalom, but I would also like to welcome Mr. Sugar Hill Stewart. And now, the champion from Hackney, London, England, making his return on Sky Sports. He is the undefeated. He is the former British, Commonwealth, European, and WBA Continental Cruiserweight Champion, and the current reigning, defending WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World, he is known and feared by many in the division as the sauce. Here is Lawrence Acoli. A world title on the line, a battle of the unbeaten. David, I'll come to you first. Welcome to the UK. 20 fights, 20 wins. You have not come here just to take part. You've come here to win. Yeah, definitely. That's why I'm here. You know, I've worked my way up to this. I could have taken this fight a few years ago uh, for the money. I'm not here for the money. I'm here for the belt. Lawrence, you've been on this stage many times before. You won't be intimidated by it. Do you think the occasion will get to David? No, he seems like a very cool, calm, collected person. He's been and beaten some undefeated fighters in their hometown before, so I feel in their mind this will be a, a similar kind of um, proposition. But, you know, obviously I have to show them very different on the weekend. There's been constant light work references in the build-up. Um, but what kind of fight are you expecting on Saturday night? I think it's, it's too easy when your name is David Light to, to make that kind of joke. But ultimately, in, you know, we prepared uh, extremely well. I brought in the best bar and I could. Um, I brought in people that he's boxed, the best Americans. I've had Babbitt. I've had heavy. I've had really um, top-tier sparring to get myself ready. Uh, he's someone that 
he, with the way he presents himself with his personality and how he looks, you could almost try and overlook him. But I'm someone that when I see him, I know what he really is. So I'm prepared for um, what he may, may bring and then, um, I'm going to do what I'm meant to do. David, you are the mandatory. You haven't been voluntarily picked. Um, does that give you confidence going into this fight? You've been cool as a cucumber, all build up. Yeah, definitely, because I'm not here on someone else's terms. I'm here on the WBO. I've earned this and I've made this fight happen. Earning the shot, becoming number one and, and winning the face-off to get this fight. He's rangy, he's awkward, he hits hard. How do you win? Yeah, that's what uh, question people have been asking me uh, all week. Um, but, you know, I'm not reinventing the wheel. Uh, this is boxing. You've got to punch the other person more than they punch you. And, um, yeah, I've done the work. I've got the sparring partners, big rangy guys, all six foot five, six foot six. And I've, I've had success. I'll bring in your trainer, uh, Isaac. You've obviously seen a lot of Lawrence. You would have studied him. Do you see anything that you can take advantage of? If so, can you let us know of any of them? Oh, look, every fighter's got their weaknesses. Just Lawrence has got weaknesses, strengths, man. And um, we've got a game plan. We're confident. We're here to win. We're going to win. And um, I, I firmly believe Lawrence has overlooked us. I think the media, everyone's overlooked us. And um, you guys are all in for a big shock Saturday night. What do you say to, to the reports that you are overlooking David Light? Um, have you overlooked him? Have you, have, you, have you prepared diligently as always? Yeah, as always, you know, um, you, wouldn't, you don't get to this position overlooking people ever. I think it's a nice, safe place to hide behind being the underdog, which is what Peach is probably trying to do here. And ultimately, the day's going to come, Saturday's going to come, and one of us is going to win and the other one's going to become irrelevant. So, yeah, I look forward to it. David, you've said that you don't think this fight goes 12 rounds. Um, who gets stopped? Well, I'm not me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lawrence, do you see this going 12 or do you see this getting stopped inside a distance? Uh, I think obviously with Sugar. Um, Sugar keeps saying to me every day he loves knockouts. Uh, I'm, not, um, I'm not delusional. I know this is a grown man in front of me who's been training very hard. So I don't think it, it's going to be necessarily early, although I am going to be from round one um, matching him uh, and overmatching him for pressure and power. Because I think that, you know, boxing is a very simple sport once you're in it, which is uh, a tall fighter, you have to dip under, um, get to work, outwork someone. So I've been, um, I've been preparing, that's what I've got to say. And I'm, I'm, very, I'm very, very excited for Saturday um, to implement a lot of the stuff that me and Sugar have been working on. I think David's the perfect um, fighter for it because he's coming to win uh, and as you come to win and your coach is banging on the side saying, come on, you can do it, and land, it sets you up for a lot of openings. Um, and I think that boxing is a very physical sport. So same way he can punch, I can punch, and we're going to find out um, who comes out on top very, very soon. Well, let's bring in Sugar Hill. Uh, Sugar, it's a, a new partnership with you and Lawrence. How has he been looking in camp? What changes have you made? Have you implemented that cronk style to what you already had? Well, uh, Lawrence has been, um, <clears throat> he's been improving uh, from week to week, and uh, the camp is a lot longer than we expected. So uh, it, it gave us time to work on more things and to become more fluent with those things and seeing things and uh, creating openings. So I'm very happy uh, with the time that we did spend together, <clears throat> the extra time. And uh, I'm just excited for Lawrence to go out there and uh, be happy. He said you love knockouts. Uh, I think all the fans at home love knockouts. Are you expecting a knockout on Saturday night? I definitely do. Uh, that's part of the game plan that in every fighter I train is just trying to go get the knockout. Uh, really don't like leaving it into the judges' hands. Listen, I don't like listening to the judges' scorecard, period. I just hate it. I don't care what happens. I just hate it, hate it, hate it. Ben, uh, we have a fight here that practically sells itself, a world title on the line. Um, all the ingredients for uh, a very good night of boxing. Yeah, this is, a, this is a serious fight. I want to thank <clears throat> Matt Rose as well. He's been brilliant to get this fight over the line. It's, it's a proper world title fight. It's someone that's earned his position. 
not some not someone that we've chosen, not someone we would necessarily choose for the first fight after a year out with a new trainer on a new platform after everything that we've been through. This is a serious fight. Um, we know David likes tough. We know he's durable. We know he can punch. We know he's he's always fighting on the front foot, and he's going to stick it on Lawrence on Saturday night. And uh, there's a lot of pressure on Lawrence to prove to everyone who he is, why we believe he's the best cruiserweight in the world, and he's got to be able to deal with David Light. And uh, very, very excited for it. I think we're in for an absolute treat, and um, we're certainly not overlooking David Light. Matt, uh, it's a, a long way to come. You must be supremely confident in your man. Yeah, look, um, David has shown um, remarkable resilience over the last four years. Um, I mean, it was only two years ago that he ruptured his uh, Achilles. Could have quite uh, easily ended his career. Um, but in the good hands of Peach, he's bounced back. He's beat the number 14, and then we took on the number six in, in Brendan Glanton. So he knows how to go in the, into people's backyards and win. That's one thing that David turns up, and he fights no matter where he goes. He comes to Australia, obviously based in New Zealand. He comes to Australia, he wins there. So... We're supremely confident that David has done all the work. Peach has put uh, a great plan together. And come Saturday night, uh, I told Benny Shalom earlier, we're, we're here to spoil the party, you know. So I know David's here to win. He's here to, here to, here to knock uh, Lawrence out. And I can't see it going any other way. David, I guess there's only one thing left to do. I need to press you for a prediction for Saturday night. Well, you won't get one because I'm not really in the business of doing that. But... What I can't predict is going to be a good fight. I think it's going to be a really good fight. I'm coming to win. I know he's a proud man. He's going to defend it with everything he's got. And that's what I love about the sport. I love putting on good fights. So that's what I'm here to do. Lawrence, what happens on Saturday? Um, have I, a prefer, I, prefer, I prefer it not to be a good fight because it shows that two people are on the same level when they're there having a 50-50 punch up. So I want to completely go in and dominate from range. And when he does get inside, show him that I'm the better inside fighter and then get back out of range and hopefully score the knockout. Good luck to everyone. Uh, only one place to see it. Sky Sports, Saturday night. Final tickets are available at boxart.com. Oh, Chester live on Sky Sports Showcase, presented by Boxer, promoted by Ben Shalom. Two men at the top of the cruiserweight division, vying for the WBO Cruiserweight Championship of the World. From New Zealand, David, the great white light, and the champion from Hackney, London, England, Lawrence, the sauce, Akoli. Johnny, we saw it with the uh, Joshua Bratzi uh, last week or the week before at the press conference. And I think we'll see with Lawrence Nicoli that it, there's something slightly different about them. What do you think it is? It, it's like they really do mean business. They're taking control. Yeah, yeah. And that's like, that's exactly what it is. They've take, they seem to have taken control of their destiny. Uh, uh, they are the responsible for everything they do and say now where they're not having to, they're not stood behind anybody else talking for them. And so uh, I actually like that because they are their own business. And, um, and, and so now you're going to pay attention to every little minor detail. Lawrence and even, in, even moving with, uh, uh, moving trainers, uh, working alongside Tyson Fury, you'll learn so much in doing that. Uh, Sugar Hill's a small cookie. And uh, so for me, I think it's a good move. Hello, Andy Clark. Have a mic. Come and join the fun. <laughs> We're just saying that there seems to be something about Lawrence Acoli, same with Joshua Waxy, that there's a bit more authority, a bit more like they mean business at this time. Yeah, I think so. I think they've had an interesting experience over the last couple of years, haven't they? And I think boxing's one of those sports where when it's not necessarily going 
your way, you learn some hard lessons, and you harden up, I think, just as a person, as, as an individual, as a business person, if you like, you, you, you'll know all about this. And they've got that vibe now. I think they've definitely got that. They've, they've definitely got, where am I going here? <laughs> they, they've definitely <laughs> got that vibe something. about the pair of them, where they know that it is a short career and you can't waste any time. Yeah and they need to get on with things. He needs to take care of David Light, who I like. I've been watching his interview, spoke to him today. He's got some genuine confidence about him. I just think stylistically he could have problems because he carries his hands low and he stands in range, really, is what he tends to, what he tends to do. So I fancy Lawrence to put on a good display. And, and we're all kind of looking to see whether there'll be any real changes with a new trainer. I think they'll just look to build on what Shane was already doing. Yeah. Well, what do you think Sugar Hill will add to Lawrence's his game? I think when we look at him, we've always felt that what he struggles with is maintaining that distance and using his reach. And when he gets onto the inside, he is so strong that he can win the fight having a wrestle. And he's done that a few times. Matthew Askin springs to mind. Yeah, that, that was it's a just really, really bad to watch. So it is just about keeping that distance. And at the Cronk, you know, they love to they love to teach long straight punching don't they and they've had some great people to not teach it to but to bring it out of Lennox Vladimir Klitschko Klitschko is probably the best example of how to box a big man and fight, I think physically he? looking at Lawrence he has every all the attributes they want yeah. long arms long yeah. legs rangy it, so I, he has it all for them to work with naturally. yeah and it's what they're looking to do is pretty it's pretty simple yeah. isn't it but any world-class fighter needs world-class basics and just drilling those world-class basics into someone it sounds like the easiest thing in the world, but it's clearly not because you, all sorts of things can happen. It He'll fall in behind that right so hand. Easy. He'll lose his balance, and you know. It always sounds so easy, doesn't it? When we're just talking about it and actually putting it into practice, yeah, yeah. it's a lot, it's a lot yeah. harder than you absolutely, think. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And then you know, in the in the heat of battle, you know, just managing to just remember to take that little half step back. And if he was if he was useless on the inside and he couldn't win fights on the inside, then it would be an easier thing to teach him, wouldn't it? But uh, you I'm get up close and you and you feel that physical strength and the advantage, and you think I could just stay here yeah. and throw I, you I, around. I, I and just win. Say at the moment he smothers his work, and I That's think Sugar it. Hill will learn him to just get that little bit. A little bit of reach, a little bit of distance, create that distance, and then he can drop the power, and then his power will be will be tenfold. And so yeah. we might not see it this fight. We might see it two or three fights down the, down the line, as long as the, the, the learning process is, is ongoing. From what Lawrence was saying and then the way he was talking, he seems pretty keen to, to make a statement. A, do you think he, he will? Um, and B, does he need to, do you think? Because he, he's been out of the ring for a year, I guess. He's back on Sky Sports. Do you think he'll feel a pressure that he'll, he'll want to sort of show the world again what he can do? Yeah, I, I, th I think he will feel it. I think he should feel it. And I think he does need to show us what he can do. I think David Light, he's earned this opportunity. He, he's been away from home. He's got some big wins. Like I said, I, I believe him. I believe his confidence. I just don't think he'll quite have enough for Lawrence on the evidence of, of what I've seen. You look at his cruiserweight division and, you know, I saw Badu Jack beat Makabu a few weeks ago. Badu Jack, 39 years old, good, good fighter, but probably going to be difficult to get out of Saudi Arabia or, or the UAE, to be honest. Then you've got Opataya, who, who's got to fight Masternak. Chris Billam smith will be hoping that he, that he gets Gulamiri and the WBA guy. And it's all kind of there for the taking, really, yeah, I think. I, yeah, I think... I think uh... Uh, I think now, especially for Lawrence, I think you look at him and you think he's top of the tree. He is top of the tree. There's experienced guys there, but I think Lawrence is, I keep saying he's not the finished article, but he's a world champion. And he's only going to improve. And as he's improving, that's where... Where, where does he need to improve? Like, What does he need to tweak? Just, just a little tweak. As, as I said, he smothers his work when yeah. he's on the inside. Just just figure that out. Just just figure out those little mental warfare he's got to think of, of working alongside of, uh, of Sugar Hill and working alongside of Tyson Fury he's going to learn so many tricks of the trade that they don't you don't see uh, on the outside you see it in the gym and this is what he needs he needs that extra bit of something about his fighting style so do you think we need to see a statement from him on Saturday we will see one because I think he's frustrated I think now he's uh, he's uh, he's a captain of his own ship and so that responsibility of an adult lies out solely on him so he, he doesn't want to mess this up and he'll get a job done. I don't, I don't see it going the distance, if I'm honest with you. What do you see? What, what prediction are you going with? You're not really meant to give a prediction, are you? But I'll ask you. Well, I, I don't see it going down yeah. the stretch. I, I don't see that happening. I, I think the light will give a good account of himself. And 
I think he'll show us something, he'll offer us something. But if Akoli can use his sheer physical advantages, then he should win the fight. Because when you're six foot five and you've got the freakishly long reach that he's got, if you can maximise that, then you can make it incredibly difficult for any opponent. But particularly someone like David Light, who, as I say, does carry those hands quite low, he would appear in a way to be kind of made for him. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it because with Akoli, like even watching him through the amateurs, he qualified for the Olympics after 22 fights and, and all that kind of thing. When he turned pro, you knew that there was potentially a lot more to come. Yeah. It was just whether they could get it out of him. And British Commonwealth European world champion, you know, he doesn't really get talked about maybe as much as he should. And I do feel, like Johnny just said, been, that there there's, is there's still been, much more to come. There's been fights, isn't there? Like we, we bigged up the fight with Isaac Chamberlain, didn't we? It was probably a little bit too soon. But there's slight sort of bumps along the way, isn't it? We haven't quite seen, like you just said, we haven't seen his full potential yet. It's there, but we haven't I, seen it. I don't it. think we we'll really appreciate um, uh, Lawrence for a good five or six fights. And then when he's in a tough one, a tough one a tough, and, and he comes through that, then we'll start to give credit where credit's due. And again, I'll go back to, to Tyson Fury. Look at the style. His style's not smooth. His style doesn't sometimes look attractive. But now he's turned into a, uh, an aggressive counter puncher with power. And so now, now it's coming, coming together for him where he's dominating completely. And I think Lawrence could do the same. You know, but it's a case of on the way there, he's going to come across some hurdles. And uh, they're the ones that he's got to get through. Uh, very quickly before we go, Johnny's looking forward to Fraser Clark. In terms of the rest of the card, who, who are you looking most forward to seeing? Oh, Gomez against Levi Giles. Oh, how good was that back and forth? <laughs> Go Gomez against Levi Giles. English title fights are great. I've done loads of English title fights, loads of area title fights. And through kind of a bit of luck with, with Jack Catterall and Tasha Jonas not ending up on the card, it's gone up to chief support. These fights are tremendous. You know, they, they always deliver. There's so much at stake. These two stylistically, I think they'll, they'll give us a good fight. Gomez is a great story, obviously, him going back to the arena, boxing on Sky all the rest of it but Levi is you know he's locked in he's, he's zoned in and that, that is going to be a really really good fight Levi's a scaffolder isn't he he used to be he okay, used to be yeah. now installs internet he was telling me so okay, but he's taken a physically yeah, 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 no so. he's taken a physically slightly less demanding job I think was the idea of it but, <laughs> but yeah these, these, the, the great thing about domestic boxing in the UK is that we've got this pathway of titles area title English title up to British so you can be in really competitive fights from an early stage, and that's what this is. It's a vacant title, um, loads of big chat, um, which is what we like. More from Gomez and, than from, from Levi. And it's only going to catch fire even more, isn't it? I have a feel, feeling the way in tomorrow yeah. is going to be a little yeah. bit spicy. Um, that's it from us here today at the Love Factory. We'll be back here tomorrow, 1 o'clock, for that final face-off and the weigh-in. So make sure you join us, then we'll see you then.